Hi, my name is James Nightingale, and in this video, I'm going to talk, talk you through the CS358 project. So, this is quite a, a comprehensive project. It covers most of the things that you've learned throughout the, the first half of the module, uh, and it accounts for 60% of your marks for the module. So, it's a very, very important component of the module. So, let's think about this uh, in a little bit more detail. So what is the project? So what we're trying to do is to get you to build a very small application that, at least in part, um, replicates an inventory control system for a manufacturing company. Um, the system uh, is built around the, the notion that our company manufactures components. It manufactures a, diff a range of components, and there are three or four different types of components that we manufacture and that each of those components itself has a different set of attributes. And some, some components are universal, uh, that they fit everything, there is only one size and shape. There are other components, such as the rudder pivot pins, um, where there are three different sizes of a rudder pivot pin, and there are other components that only fit specific aircraft. Um, so, as I say, each of those components has its own set of attributes. So when you're designing your solution, you need to take this into consideration. So, what we're doing is manufacturing components, but then, in terms of our system, our entire system is built around managing the ba batches of components, and each of these batches consists of a single component type so a batch can only contain a single component, all of the same size and shape. So for example, if our batch is a batch of rudder pins, it can only take, contain rudder pins of the same diameter and length. There is no mix and match, and this does make it an awful lot easier for you when it comes to implement this. Um, some other things to note, that our components, when they're manufactured, are manufactured in a state called unfinished uh, and within your attributes it should say that they have been manufactured but they are unfinished. The reason being is it tells you in the brief that it may be at a later stage components may be painted or may be polished in some way to a particular customer's requirements but the raw product sits on the shelf um, manufactured and is not finished until such times as a purchase order is provided from the, the client. Um, okay, so let's look at our um, project in a bit more detail. So first thing to note is the project is broken down into three distinct steps um, and there are marks associated with each step. It is it, the best advice that I can give you would be that you take these steps in order and that you take step one, complete step one, test it and make sure that it is fully working before you move on to step two. That way you will have the marks for step one in the bank. And step one accounts for 30 marks on its own. As I'll explain later, there are other marks available for other things uh, within this that can take, possibly take you up to the 40% with step one on its own. Um, so what we, you need to do is, is, as I say, step at a time. Um, right, so let's look at step one in a little bit more detail. So step one is actually pretty straightforward. All we want is assessing your ability to understand structs and arrays in C. Um, so all we want you to do at step one is to follow the instructions here and build a little program that allows a user to enter one single batch. So a single batch of components, uh, there are a maximum of 20 components in a batch, uh, all of the same type. It doesn't have to store it in a file or anything like that, it just has, all we have to do is you have to create, have a little menu that says create a batch, and there's an example of the menu here. Create a, create a batch or quit, so the user clicks on create a batch, you then ask the user a series of questions in order to create that batch, and those questions are What's today's date? Um, what's the batch number? So the batch number, the user will say one, at this stage we'll just say one, two, three, four, and um, it'll be generated, you will then join the date with the, um, 
batch number that the user enters to give you a complete batch number as shown here. You'll be asked how many components are in the batch um, and you'll be asked what type of the type of component and then the specific size of fit of that component. When you've when the user has answered all of the questions to these prompts, what your program should do is then print out the details of the batch. Really, that's all there is to step one. So in step one, we're just to say assessing structs and arrays, you have to create some structure that accommodates a batch. Within that batch, there are components, and these components have certain attributes. Uh, and those attributes are the component type, its size, or, or any other distinguishing feature. In reality, that's all there is to step one. Input the data and print it. Okay, so having established that, um, what it does say here, and I will come to this at the end of this video, is that when you have created um, your program, you need to test it. And one of the things you have to upload is a testing plan. At, towards the end of this video, after I've been through all three steps, I will talk a little about a testing plan. Okay, so moving on to step two. Step two, all we're doing is now, in, in step one, we had a single component. In step two, we want to have a series of components. So we want a, a series of batches. So step one, we had one batch. In step two, we want to be able to enter more than one batch. So as you can see, our menu has now expanded. Um, our menu in step two allows us to create a batch, it allows us to list all the batches that are already there, uh, and it allows us to view, view details of a single batch. Now, in this part of the assessment, what we're doing is we're assessing your ability to understand singly linked lists. So if you were to imagine that a single batch in step one is a struct or an array or some combination of those together, then step two is a single linked list where each of the nodes in that single linked list is a batch, which is a struct or an array or whatever structure you've already created in step one. So essentially you're taking what you've done in step one and building on it by moving from a single batch to a number of batches that are managed within your program using a singly linked list. So each node is a batch. Um, in order to do this, what we have to do is um, expand what we input. So at the point where you're inputting your information now, we have to either, we can either create a new batch exactly the same as step one, but when we do so, it now is adds a node, another node, another node, another node to a linked list. The new features that we have at step two is that we need to be able to list all of the batches that are there. So in order to do that, in step one, you will have developed a print method that allows you to display information on the batch that you developed. In step two, what you want to do is utilize that print method going through your linked list and extracting information on each batch. Now you will see that not all of the information is necessarily uh, needed if you're just going to list all batches. So uh, in, if you use menu option two, it gives an abbreviated set of information, so a summarized set of information on each batch. Whereas if you use option three, which is the view details of a batch, it has to go in and specifically find a single batch within your linked list based on the batch number. It has to retrieve all the details, including details of each component and, and print those. Um, perhaps I should have said that a lot about component numbers and batch numbers. Batch number, pretty straightforward in that we have our batch, we have our date and our batch number. Um, component numbers, each component within a batch is also numerically identified. Uh, for tracking purposes. So what we have is we have um, a component is identified as batch number and then component number. Components one, two, three, four, depending on how many are on the batch. Uh, 
Okay, so as you can see, step two, what we're doing is we've added the addition of the linked list. We're listing up with ability to list all the batches and these are, this is summary information or the ability to view a single batch. And step two has got 20 marks. So if you've managed to complete step one and step two, you've satisfactorily, you've definitely passed this. Right, third step is a little bit more open. Um, in that, what I do is I have added a new menu option called Update Batch Details. So in this menu, with this menu option, when you click on it, the user will have the ability to update some of the details within that batch. So I would suggest that um, the things that they could update, maybe they can't update the batch number, they can't update the component type, but it may be that you could let, and this is at your discretion what you want to let them do, but you must update something in order to get the marks. So you could have, you could update the number of components in a batch, you could update the status, remember I said at the beginning that uh, when components are um, entered in, they have a status of manufactured but unfinished, you could change that status. Up to you, but you have to modify at least one attribute in your batch in order to get the marks. So for this, you have your single link list. Within your single link list, each node is a, a batch. So based on the batch number, you have to find that batch, retrieve the information on that batch onto the screen, and then ask the user which piece of information they want to change. And bear in mind the guidelines I'm giving you that it would not be a good idea to let them change the batch number. It probably would not be a great idea to let them change the component type, but they could change the number of components in the batch and they could change the manufacturing status of the components within the batch. So, and there are 15 marks for that step. So if you take all of these three steps together, that accounts for 65 marks out of 100. Uh, and if you get all of that right, you're certainly, you're certainly passed. And you're well on your way to getting an A. Uh, okay, so the other marks that we, we get here. So there are 10 marks for your code being well written, clear, commented, and easy for us to understand. Um, there is some extra credit that's available, 15 marks, where you go above and beyond and you maybe do some research on the internet and find things that um, are not readily, uh, were not taught to you. I'll give you an example. Uh, in this document, there's a user entered date, so the user types in the date. Um, were you, for example, to be able to go to the internet and find some information on how to gather the system date from C and automatically generate the system date and the batch number, um, this would come under the heading of extra marks, extra um, credit, and you could get some pick up some extra marks for that. So something that is not covered in the course but would be useful to enhance the functionality of, of this project is going to get you some extra marks. And the final thing that you get marks for is a testing plan. So at each step of this, when you complete step one, what you should be able to do is ensure that step one is working and prove to whoever is marking this that it does work. And how you prove that it does work is by creating a little testing plan. Now, we're not gonna go into too much detail on testing. I'm just gonna give you a very brief example of the kind of thing that you may want to consider. So when you create a testing plan, all you're doing is creating a table and you're gonna have some, you're gonna say what you want to test. So I want to test, for example, that the number of components that I enter in a batch works properly. Um, how are you going to test it? You're going to put in some sample data. What is the sample data? And in another column in your table, 
what the expected output would be. So let's take the example of the number of components in a batch. If I say, not what it says here, but if I say that the maximum number of components in a batch is 999. Um, examples of the sort of testing data you could have is, you could have zero components in the batch, so your program should react to that and it should say something like, sorry, you can't have a batch with zero components. It's a bit silly. Similarly, with a negative number of components, it should say, don't be so daft. Um, if the maximum number of components in a batch is 999, then if you enter 1,000 components, and this zero and 1,000 is called boundary testing. So if you enter 1,000 components, what should happen is your program should say, hold on, you can only have we're only allowed to have 999 in a batch. Can you re-enter that, please? Uh, so those could be examples within your testing plan. So I'm testing that the number of elements in the batch works. I'm testing it using zero, and it should give me an error. I'm testing it using 1,000, and it should give me an error. And I'm now testing it using 55, and it should work. Um, and not only should it work, but when it comes to listing out the number of components and all of the, the prints for a batch, it should say there are 55 components in this batch. And as you, you can see from the descriptor, when we list a batch, it lists every component in the batch. So it should also list all of those 55 components with the correct numbering for each individual component. So those are the kind of things that you need to think about and write down in your test. So if for it, other things are you can create a, a, an example of, I'm going to put in, uh, make a component, and it's going to be my first batch of the day. Is the batch number going to be correct? Has it got the correct day? Has it got the correct uh, batch number? I put in the number of components in my batch. Are those, does it produce the, the right number of elements in the array or whatever data structure you use within there? And is each of these individual components numbered correctly? When I've selected, that it has, uh, it uses rudder pins. Does it correctly display the fact that these are rudder pins? That's been correctly stored. The logic of my program is correctly assigning rudder pin into my struct array. Um, is it a case that it's also getting the right size of rudder pins? So this is a 10 by 75 or whatever rudder pin. Is it whatever data I, or am I making sure that whatever data I am hoping to get, this is what I'm picking uh, from my menu uh, when I'm in entering the data, is this what's coming back out? So what you're doing is simply making sure that whatever you put in comes out. In this program, there isn't really much in the way of logic, if then else, uh, where things can go, go wrong. The only places where you can really go wrong here, and you have to think about what you test are that the number of components in a batch is correct, the batch number itself is correct, the component numbers are correct, that the right component is in the batch and the right size or shape or whatever descriptor of component is in the batch. That's really all you have to worry about um, in terms of the batch itself. And then in terms of your linked list, what you'll have to do is make sure that your linked list correctly um, holds every every batch. So your list all batches option will need to be tested. And in that, you need to have some routine that says I've entered, for example, three batches in your testing plan. I'm going to enter three batches. The batches will contain this, this, and this, and X number of components in each. And what I expect to get out when I press list all batches is three rows describing these batches uh, in the same way as the with the same attributes as the sample input data. If it doesn't happen, if that doesn't happen, then there's an error and you need to go back and look at it. So what I want you to do in terms of testing is create a table and I'll, I'll show a little example, I'll put just a little example of the table for you. Um, create a, a simple table saying this is what I want to test, here's the sample data I'm going to use and this is what I expect to happen when that sample data is entered. Uh, and just do that for each of the things that I've said to you are, are, are important in this. Um, batch number, number of components in a batch, um, the right component type, the right component description in terms of size or fitment, that sort of thing. 
really that's all there is to testing and there are 10 marks for that I mean if you got step one complete and perfect and you got your testing complete and perfect you've passed so um, that's all there is to this short video explaining the project if you have any further questions just drop me an email thank you